This video is about an interesting development in astrophysics that I've followed for some years now. It's the idea that black holes are the source of dark energy. This recently made headlines because there are tentative results suggesting that dark energy might change in time. This fits with the idea that it might be made of black holes and it had also determined the ultimate fate of our universe. Let's have a look. Black holes are a consequence of Einstein's theory of general relativity. They are mathematically characterized by two properties. The one is the event horizon, that's a surface from within which nothing, not even light, can escape. And in the middle, they have a singularity where everything gets squashed together to infinite density. If you fall into a black hole, you'll inevitably be dragged into the singularity and then you can stop worrying about repaying your student loan. Dark energy is something else entirely, oh so it seems. It's the name we've given to whatever it is that speeds up the expansion of the universe. Dark energy is what determines the ultimate fate of our universe, how it'll end. Will the expansion get faster and faster? Will it slow down? Is maybe even a recollapse and a new beginning possible? It all depends on this mysterious stuff, dark energy. Astrophysicists measure the change in the expansion by looking at distant galaxies. When I say distant, I don't mean they're estranged fifth cousins, I mean they are billions of light years away. We can measure how the structure and motion of these galaxies has changed with time, and that tells us how the universe expanded. And a recent measurement, that from the Dark Energy Survey instrument DESI for short, has delivered quite a surprise. The DESI experiment is a telescope which does a sky survey atop Kitt Peak in Arizona. It looks for baryon acoustic oscillations, patterns in galaxies that are left over from sound waves in the plasma in the early universe. Dark energy affects how those patterns change with time. So by measuring the patterns for galaxies at different ages, we can find out how dark energy changed. The group found very tentative evidence that dark energy is not constant, but getting slightly weaker. A similar finding was pre previously made by another experiment which looked at supernovae data. The significance of the finding is currently low, around 2.6 sigma, so maybe it'll go away with better data. However, if it's right, it means that the expansion of the universe is speeding up, but not as much as we thought, and it's getting slower. So what's causing it? This is where the black holes come in. The idea is that we've totally misunderstood what black holes do. Black holes don't just sit inside galaxies, they feel the expansion of the universe and they expand with it. And if black holes expand, their mass grows. So the mass inside the universe grows and that can mimic dark energy. This seems to violate energy conservation, but remember that energy is just not conserved in an expanding universe. There have been some previous studies that say that the growth of these individual black holes is too small to be directly observable and it's compatible with observations. In the new paper now, they calculate the contribution of these growing black holes to the expansion of the universe. For this, you need to know how many black holes were formed at any time in the history of the universe. It's not a steady rate. In the early universe, a lot of stars form rather suddenly once conditions allow it. Some of them later go on to form black holes. So for some while, there's a lot of black hole formation, which later slows down. This means if black holes cause dark energy, then you expect dark energy to become weaker, which is indeed what the observations suggest. In the paper, they show that the models fit the observations. They don't say this in the paper, but since black holes will eventually all evaporate entirely, I guess this would mean that dark energy will entirely disappear and the universe would recollapse. It's usually called a big crunch, though to me that sounds like a cereal bar. Okay, now that you know what they've done, let me tell you why I don't believe this is what's really going on. First, to make this work, you can't use normal black holes. These will just not increase in size. You need to assume black holes aren't what we think they are. They're mathematically different, have no singularity and have internal pressure. It's an ad hoc assumption that's neither supported by mathematics nor observations. Second, that assumption doesn't make any sense because most black holes sit 
certain galaxies and galaxies simply don't expand with the universe. So what do you even want to couple them to? You may wonder now why I tell you about this if I don't believe it's true. It's because I may be wrong and I want you to know what's going on regardless of what I think. At the very least, it'll give you something to talk about at Thanksgiving. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. Sounds good. I hope it does. You can try Brilliant yourself for free if you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina. That way you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.